Well, this is old electronics fan. <clears throat> and originally, I was going to use this radio to play around with oscilloscopes. Um, I had posted um, a video comparing the Rigol to my analog. Um, and someone made a comment that um, they felt that I was not using my scope correctly and I was going to discourage others from um, using digital scopes in the, uh, especially young folk, new uh, people, um, beginners, whatever you want to call them, um, from using digital scopes in the radio work. And <clears throat> I really didn't want to do that, of course. Um, I, I don't remember when I produced that video. Um, but the Roy Rigol scope, which is still very popular today, by the way, uh, was produced in 2008. Since then, uh, well, it's not 15 years, it's 16 years now. Or in 2024. It's been 16 years since that was released um, and a lot has happened um, with regards to digital scopes. Um, but I thought, you know, maybe maybe he has some po a point or two about how how I'm using that digital scope and maybe I need to revisit it. And that's what this video is, is, is going to be on. I'm not going to... I'm kind of just use... I'm going to use my analog as sort of a reference point to see if I can duplicate on the digital scope what I get there. Or something that will give you the same information that you're looking for. In other words, does it make sense to just have a digital scope and not bother with an analog? And he rightly points out that analog scopes are going away. A lot of people still use them. Uh, but um, the modern digital scopes are way way better than, than the Rigol is it's just like I said 16 years old but to try to go to buy a Rigol now they're still around 400 bucks which kind of shocked me but when I fired up this radio I still don't know exactly what happened <coughs> but um, this tube lit up and it acted like it had fireworks going off inside of it and then everything died and um, I put that today. I probably no. Here it is. Okay. All right. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Oops. This poor little resistor got damaged. My brand new 47 bulb went away. And worst of all, the filament in this tube went away. So, um, I would just was flabbergasted about what on earth happened. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and uh, let's see, I want to be over. Can we get in there a little closer? Maybe you can. All right. Um, I'm going to put a picture up there, but I'm going to point to my problem area. I did not want to just stick another tube in there without finding out exactly what happened. I'm very glad I didn't put that tube in there because I'd be looking at two dead tubes. Okay. Right here, there was a finger of solder sticking out of the side of this and it was actually far enough over to touch this pin. At first I, was just thought, I just thought that was just a piece of solder sticking out there. As it turns out, <coughs> This capacitor, one leg of this capacitor was connected here originally. And it's stranded wire. And um, <clears throat> somehow, some way, when I pulled that wire out of here, not all of the wire came out of here. And that finger was sticking out. And I did not notice. When you, you know, I'm going to show you the picture. It's going to look like this is a legitimate connection from here to here. Um, it's not. decidedly not. Um, 
So let's take a look at the schematic a little bit here and we'll see um, why that happened. I wasn't sure at first what had happened, but um, I think I've got I think I've got it sorted just now. Um, all right, go down to where the problem occurred. Yes, right there. Now, it took me a while to figure out uh, where where this connection right here was because the the uh, resistor that got cooked was actually this one right here. And I knew where that one went. It went from pin 2 up to pin 5. And this bulb the same thing. Both of these are across. Well, actually, I take that back. Oh, yes, okay. Ah, yes. Well, I guess you could technically say that. So, they actually across pins 2 and pin 3. Um, this is my poor dead pilot bulb, which I have not put a new one back in. I've got one left. I want to play this for a while, make sure it stays alive. I'm pretty sure it's fixed, but anyway. So this poor thing lives there, but I didn't know where the short actually occurred because I think, let's see, um, okay. So when I was looking at the radio, um, let's move this up a little bit. Um, okay, this is the, the resistor that got cooked. This is the capacitor I put in to replace that one leg of that capacitor. And here is the 220 ohm resistor, and over here is a 33 ohm resistor. And if you look at this, let's get back here and go down. All right, let's swing this around a little bit so it's square, more or less. All right, so 33 and 220. So that told me, that told me when I finally got my head in gear and started paying attention to what was where and what was connected to what, um, I found that this was pin 4. Well, why would a short between pin 4 and pin 5 cause this? Um, and this is pin 3, which is 5 and 3 are tied together. Running a short between here and here, I'm sorry, between here and here means that, well, for one thing, there's 115 volts DC on there. But the other thing is, you're taking the AC that's coming in, and you're feeding it through these four, um, okay, I think here's what happened. All right, so the AC comes in, goes through here, goes through here, and goes up to the plate. When you short this to this, this allows full AC to go down through this capacitor to ground. There was a sizable amount of current flowing through there. When that happens, um, current is going to flow through this, this, and this. All three of those items got fried. And I, I believe it's just plain 100, well, 120 volts actually is what was on there. 120 volts through this, this, and this. None of the three could handle that kind of current flowing through here and out to ground. I, um, I think that's, yeah, that's a 160 volt. So this capacitor is a 160 volt capacitor, so it could handle that 120 volts. It wouldn't die. These three things, however, they could not handle it. So, um, yeah. So well, that was my fault, because um, it looked like it was a normal, appropriate wiring connection between those two pins, but obviously not. Well, we know not. So anyway, so let's so let's put that aside and move on to what I really wanted to do. Now, 
one of the things uh, that uh, let's back out of here so you're not looking at all right let's go back here so what I've done I've gone I created a little cheat sheet so I could uh, remember what I was testing and where and what my settings were so I don't have to hunt around because um, I don't I don't follow RF chains very often although I might try to um, I have to think about trying that with, uh, hmm, I have to see what the frequency range of this, of one of these two is, because I've got a radio that I can't figure out why the short, wor short wave isn't working, and I've checked so many things, I have not put a scope on it yet, that may be the next thing, see if I can find anything, but, um, alright, so, so, my goal is not to say that the analog is better than the digital. I'm kind of answering the question of should you just go straight to a digital? And there are a lot of people using these these Roigel scopes. Like I said, their their value is shot up. I mean, I, I didn't pay what I what they're asking for them now. I I didn't pay for this. I paid a lot less for this than that. Um, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to I'm going to go. I'm going to start with my 12 SK7, and you'll, you'll you'll see something interesting as I go through this. Um, I've got odd odd readings from here, but we'll we'll play around with that too. Pin six. It should have been six. Maybe I was connected to the wrong spot. We'll have to verify it. So I am starting here. And I was going to go here and then go over to here. And I'll explain a little bit uh, as I'm doing it why and, and what you're seeing. Um, all right, so let's do that. So the other thing I've done is I've I've hooked up a uh, I've hooked up an antenna for my uh, for the radio. Um, To, um, after frying that tube, I thought, you know, it would have been smart to have left this, or to have hooked this up to my tube protection, but I thought, well, I've been playing this for quite a while, I shouldn't have to bother. Alright, anyway. So, this should be ready to go. Um, I don't know what I want to play. Okay. Alright. So for the start I don't need that volume up, so we'll just keep that off or low as we can. Alright, so let's start with my analog first. And I want to go to my cheat sheet says 12 SK7 plate 8. Uh, 12 SK7 and that's there. Um and eight. Let's see, eight. Where are you? Uh, you would think I would remember. That should be this one. All right. Yeah. All right. So we got to do this. All right. So maybe I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can see better. So you see, so let me see if that matches what I, I okay. Now you can um, well I'm not gonna bother with this uh, changing this well if I do this you're seeing dancing around on the screen there is kind of a mix of uh, RF and uh, audio. Alright, so that's what this looks like on here. Um, and so let's see, I'm going to set that to what it should be set to. The two of these gave me different readings because this one knows that I'm using a 10x probe and this one does not. And that should be correct. All right, so let's take you away.
Okay, so, so you can see uh, uh, and I'm centering that and I'll see how this looks when we get. So what we're seeing here is um, there's a 455 carrier being modulated by the AM signal or the, the audio signal. So if I stop this um, let's see, you'll see, you should see a change. So it does make a difference if you're putting audio in there or not. There it is, okay. So you see that dancing around. So these two aren't too bad. Now, there is, uh, let me go back here. There's something I call a digital filter. Let me. Let me zoom in there. Digital filter. If I select this, I can play with this and I can try to thin it up so it's not quite so fat and you can see more of the the, the different uh, lines that make this up. But if you go, and that's maximum. So now you see there's not really any detail, but it's kind of similar to what you were seeing here. So, and if you want to clean it up a little bit, you can with your digital filter. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so now let's go to 12SQ7. It should be this one. And it should be on pin 4, I think. 12SQ7, it's the middle 2, pin 4. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to start off with my analog meter again. Um, okay. I always want to ground it first before I try to... I think that's it right there. One, two, three, four. It's down there. That's where it is. Okay. So. Now. So what you see here, in fact, let me show you on here. Most of you will know know this. I'm just for those who don't know, I am right. I say it was pin twelve. Yeah, that's okay. Pin four and pin five. This is a detector tube, uh, and ABC. It says this diode here is important because. Um, Remember the, remember the signal we just had where we had a top and bottom that were even? Well, that was that was um, a mirror image. If you had drawn a line, a center a line through the center of that, the top would be mirroring the bottom half, top half, bottom half. The the two mirrored uh, images of uh, you know, the top being the, the same voltage negative as the top is positive, those two cancel each other out, which means that without this you'd have no audio. So that's what that's the job of this diode. And as you can see, now we only have half of the signal um, that, um, that you had before. So now we're going to put, so now you see what that looks like. And you can play around with it a little bit to try to... And if you go here, still see some RF in there. Uh, Alright, so that's uh, 0.2 which is actually 2 volts. Alright, so now let's take this scope and hook it up. Alright. Alright. Alright, so Now, if I want to match the other one, I'd move it down. But now, so that looks very similar to what this has. I mean, I, I like looking at what the analog scope gives me. 
but you know that will tell you what you want to know. And like I said, if you want to, you can modify that. But when you thin it out so much, it, you kind of miss some of the the uh, the shape of the signal that you get from the analog um, unit. So, but you can play with your digital filter if you so desire, and you can do the same thing with this. Um, and this C. Um, there we are. And you see this? That's saying 458 thereabouts, 456. At this at this spot, right here, we still have some RF in there. This capacitor was is designed to filter out or take off a lot of the RF to clean it up. Um, but there's still some there. Uh, and there's also, if you go down here, there's a, a 2000 picofarad cap, again designed to get rid of some RF. There's yet another cap right here, a 200 pico, 220 picofarad, it's designed to do more filtering. So, so anyway, uh, but what's nice about this is that you can read the frequency of the signal that um, um, that you're measuring, and uh, so let me see for this. Uh, okay, it's about where is that one? Five. Let's see. Five. Yep. Okay. So now the, the settings on this are very similar to what this was. Um, but if you don't like that, um, oops. Oh. I've got that looping. Come on, loop already. Uh, not sure why that's. Oh, this should be there. It should be down here. Oh, maybe I did that. Okay. So your digital filter can take out a lot of stuff, and you can change the look of your. Um, and you, cha you can change the look of your waveform, and um, of course now I've got audio and RF here. My frequency is dancing all over the place. Um, I don't know if I do the digital filter if it changes that. No, it's not going to. All right. Anyway. So anyway, so the digital filter is there that you can play with if you want to try to get a, a different look. Uh, upper limit, and you keep going up, and keep going up, and then keep filling in more of the the data, as you will, if you will. So that works. Um, again, I'm more used to seeing this than that, but. That scope is doing the job. So the next thing I wanted to do was, yes. All right. So the next part I want to go is that I've got to check this out because I was getting odd results here, and I shouldn't. Have, well, actually, yeah. I'm going to go to pin five on the 50L6. That's what I'm going to do. Pin five. Yes. 50L6. All right. There we go. And 50L6 is up there. Pin five. And that would be one, two, three, four, five. It should be here. And I got my cheat sheet here. So I want um, there we are. And I want. So, let's see, can we get, no, and you can clearly see the audio in there, which is about to quit, aren't you? Yes, of course you are. 
So, Mike comes back, I'm going to play around with this a little bit. But you can see, you can see the audio dancing around. So if I go here, yeah, it doesn't like that. Um, so there's you can change the uh, times per division time per, per division setting to try to get something but you can clearly see that that's audio now and that's pretty much all it is and if I stop it that's what you get if I start it that's what you get all right so so let's go to this and see what we get out of that. Um, um, it should be. What did I say I wanted? I wanted five. In five of this. In five should be there. That's, that's where this was. Okay, uh, the right spot. I keep screwing up. One, two, three, four, five. That should be right. Okay, and so this should be. Oh, uh, oh, yes. Here we are. And I wanted to. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. Um, this is not going to like this low volume because we're now we're now after the volume control. So there we go. Oh, I screwed up last time too. So you can see that that's showing. I'm going to turn this down. So you can see it that it's. It's showing you that you've got audio there. Uh, if you were testing this and you had a bad uh, output transformer, you would find that you had audio um, at your tube, and then you went forward in, in the chain and you'd see that you didn't have what you had. So, okay. All right, so if I, just for fun, we'll put, we'll put the uh, analog back on there. Um, mistake was mine. Um, Okay, let's. So, let's see. Twenty. Let's go to twenty. So you can play around and get the waveform you want. But obviously this is giving the same thing. So there are there some, but there are a couple of little quirks to the rye goal that I don't really like. Um, let me just uh, turn this off for now. Um, but that's not to say that the Rigol isn't a decent unit. This will go down to 5 millivolts on the volts per division. If I go up here, I don't want to go down there. That goes down to 20 millivolts. Let me, um, yeah. So, um, 5 millivolts, 20 millivolts. I, I, when I was playing around with this, I discovered that I could get waveforms on this um, that this couldn't get to because it was a little bit limited. The other thing is that if you... I'm trying to remember where I ran into trouble. I was trying to get to a signal and I was cranking this up, I think. Can I reproduce that? Um, um, I turn this off. 
Um, maybe here, I'll have to play, I'll have to see. What this will do, and it may just be that I'm not using it right, I don't know, but um, when you get, let's go to, here it is, um, no. I get the wrong thing, don't I? Yes, I do. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Should be it. Oh. Gotta use the right cable from the right device. Okay, let's try this again. Alright, so. not doing it. Okay. What was happening, and I can't, I wish I could remember how I produced this, was that this would disappear. And I would use my position button, I'd crank it back down, and I'd go another step up and it would disappear. And it would actually get to the point where I couldn't get this, get the scan line back. Um, and yet, I could use this and I could get, I could get, um, I could read something uh, that this couldn't, and you know. But based on what I've just shown you, clearly, if you're just trying to use this for um, so, if you're just trying to use this, you want know, tra trace RF, check to see if you got audio, see if your audio is distorted. Um, both of these will do the job. I really wish I could remember what. I was doing, and I was doing it while I was playing with this, but my memory is so bad. Um, so, <clears throat> is the Rye Gold bad scope? It is not. It's old. Um, it doesn't have all the features of um, modern scopes, um, but it's got a lot. <clears throat> this thing has... Um, a USB connection on the front so you can save <coughs> you can save your uh, scans um, and save your data and then go back and replay it <coughs> this has got um, I think FFT Fourier, Fourier transformations I think I forget what they are it's got a lot of features it really does I've been just so much more used to using that and that, that I wasn't real crazy about it. Like, and I said, and like I said, there've been times when I've been trying to get get something on here, and I would switch to this scope, and I would be able to get what I was looking for. I mean, obviously, you could scan an entire RF chain, um, um, in a radio, with with a Rigol, and it would work just fine. The waveforms don't look the same as that, but if you're used to using uh, a digital, you get used to the fact that that's what those waveforms look like and that's what's normal. I think that's part of why <clears throat> I didn't care for that so much. One of the reasons I did buy that was because I wanted the ability to read the frequency, the frequencies from the signals I was I was getting. Because that really helped me out when I was trying to figure something out. And again, I don't remember what that was. But I was trying to find out um, whether I was getting the right frequencies on something. And I just can't recall now. But I used that and it helped me out a lot um, for that. But most of the time, I don't really, I really don't necessarily need a digital scope. If I were to get a newer scope that would uh, have a, a larger display a better display, if I could afford one of those, um, I would I would, I would, probably do it and I'd probably retire that. Um, but the things that I do, I, mean, I don't need to say, I don't need to save waveforms. Uh, I don't need to do any fancy math with my oscilloscope. And 
there, there are a lot of features in that scope that I just simply don't use. And I don't know that I necessarily need them. Now, one of the things that's nice about a digital scope is you hit the auto button <coughs> and uh, it will give you um, settings that are close. Sometimes they're dead on. They're not exactly what you want. But sometimes, well, for instance, if you're playing with RF stuff, it may give you something, but it's not necessarily exactly what you want. And you may need to change either your volts per division or your times per, per division <coughs> to get what you want. And that's because you, cause you saw, because uh, as you saw, I could rotate my time button and I could get back to where I could see the RF, the 455. And I was actually able to read the frequency that I was, it was seeing from this radio. Um, so that was nice. Now, you can do something similar with this, but it involves math. You have to figure it out for yourself. Because you know, because you can take the, the time per division and you can multiply it by the number of a number of divisions for your, your your sine wave or whatever your, your square wave whatever it is that you're looking at you can find out what the frequency is by doing a little bit of math that one does the math for you um, so you know the, the conclusion I come to is that this would probably do everything I want it to do for the most part. There have been a few instances where that one has done a little bit better. But this is a very popular little scope. I didn't realize it when I went looking for more information on this. I also was shocked to see what the prices are for that now. Um, very shocked. I'm just amazed. But... Um, you could you could buy something like this for four hundred. That will do a whole lot of stuff, um, and then that means you can use something like this for like for less than a thousand dollars, which is somewhat which is easy to spend on a. It's easy to pay that much on a new scope. Um, so, somebody who's starting out, this is probably a, a good scope for them to use. Like I said, I'm still. I'm, I am, I'm, because I use this a whole lot more than that, I'm more comfortable using this. But I'm capable of using both of these. And probably if I wanted to learn more, um, you know, I, I, I actually printed out, I actually printed out um, some of the, uh, some of the, the manual for the, uh, for the scope, reminding myself of stuff that I had forgotten. Um, so, um, but when I think about how much I've used that, well, either of these actually, I haven't used both, either one of these in a while. Um, I just, nothing's come up that's required me to use it, so it's making me wonder if I really need to keep that, if everything I do can be done with that. My needs are basic. Um, I want to know if an audio signal is distorting. I use that. Um, I, I can signal trace with that one. I'm familiar with the curves. Um, but I guess it just depends on what you like and what you're used to. And this is what I started out with many years ago when I first started getting into this hobby. That's what I started with. Um, and I got used to it. it. It's pretty simple to use. There's still ways you can get in trouble with that, but um, but for the most part, it's very simple to use. Uh, and there's features on that that I probably don't use. Like I said, my needs are basic. I wanted to do this video uh, because I want to make it clear that I'm not anti-digital scope, for one. In playing with this little digital scope, I can clearly see that it does an awful lot. It does everything that the, the analog scope does and more. That one will give you frequencies. Um, when you're playing with 
the mix of uh, modulated audio and RF, you can see that the frequencies dance all over the place. But if you crank it down to where you're just seeing RF, then it will tell you roughly what the frequency is. So that's helpful, I and mean, that is helpful. It's never failed. It's never had an electronic failure. It's been reliable. It's it just worked every time I've used it. I just wanted to, um, I guess, set the record straight. I'm not anti-digital. I have been looking at modern digitals um, because the displays are better, and I think the uh, some of the uh, uh, the way they display the the, uh, the various waves you're getting, sine waves and whatnot that you're getting from your equipment is better. Um, but again, I keep thinking about it. So, well, I don't. Do I really need all the stuff that the modern digital scope can give me? I mean, they do a ton, and their displays are, are larger, and they are better, and they're probably superior to this analog. And the question arises, what do I need? And that's the question I'm asking myself, and I haven't answered that question yet. Playing with the Rye goal again, I realized that um, it would it would do what I want it to do. Um, and if I'm adjusting things properly, um, then I'll get the results I want. Having the auto button is nice, but with the analog, I can quickly get to whatever settings I need. Um, I don't know why it's easier for me on this than it is on that. But if I run into problems where I can't see anything on the screen, I hit auto, it brings it back, and I tweak it to where I want it. So. Um, this is just a matter of getting used to the tool you are using, I guess. Um, and I hope this corrects any uh, misunderstandings regarding um, my views on digital scopes. Um, and I definitely am asking myself, should I get a modern digital scope? Unless, unless or until I get into more modern electronics, the answer is probably I don't really need it. All right. Well, uh, your thoughts and comments are definitely welcome. I appreciated uh, the uh, viewer who gave me his comments. And it was definitely past time um, that I got rid of that other, other video I put out there. Um, and in the course of playing with this, I learned some more stuff about the the, the uh, Rigol, um, the uh, digital filtering that you can do with it. Um, so very capable little scope. Um, I'll be honest. Before I did this video, before I did looked into this a little bit more, I was kind of looking at this as a vintage, an old vintage digital scope. And I really should be looking for another one uh, if I want to use if I wanted a, a good digital scope. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Um, so yeah, all right. I could keep blathering on. I missed. I really and truly am going to stop now. Um, like I said, I hope that you like this. Um, leave me a comment. I would appreciate that. Good or bad, tell me what you think. Um, I'm getting used to uh, the fact that not everybody agrees with me, and that's okay. Um, it's, uh, you're free to disagree. I guess I'm free to disagree with you, but uh, sometimes when I get people giving me corrective input, it either reminds me of something, it, or I learn something from it, or I also discover that, that a video that I've put out maybe should go away. Um, so I do appreciate that. So thank you. And if you've watched this far, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.